Hello, we have seen asymptotic notation. We are moving to asymptotic analysis of algorithms. Let's start with order one operations. Okay. So all these arithmetic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, etc. You can think of they are order one operation. So. So these are so these are constant time operation. Okay, uh, right. Or something like you are going to write. So here is an array, and you are going to write array of ten is equal to twenty. This is also an order one operation. So these are order one operation, and so is it clear or something or another pointer. So you are having star ptr, pr is equal to fifty. This is also an order one operation. Or if you had uh, star of pr plus hundred, okay, this is under another order one operation. So all these. Uh, Commands are order one operation. What if I uh, have two commands, two order one commands? So this followed by this. What is it? They together also they take constant time, right? Because it's one uh, some uh, time for this and some time for this. It's it's constant. Okay. So if I have all these uh, five lines in a program, this is also that program also runs in constant time, order one time. Is it clear? Okay. Now. What about this? If I have I have an if condition. If x is greater than y and I have x equal to what about this? This is also order one operation. Right. This is order one. This is a constant time. This is constant time, and this also this check also is constant time. So again, this is so again. This is also order one. Right. If I had an else. Sender block of code. This is also order one. Okay, so I hope uh, you are getting the picture. Let's look at a for loop. What about this? What about this? How much time does this take? Okay, so asymptotically, this is order n. Where is this n? This is how many times does this printf function execute? If you run this block of code, how many printfs, how many hellos will you see as output? That's n, right? So this individually, this is order one, but this together is order n. Right, so an order one command has been executed n times, and therefore this ender block of operation is going to run in order n time. Okay, good. Now, if this block of code is inside this, let's say it's in the else loop.
right? So if this is the case, how much time does this else loop take? This is going to take order n, right? Okay, because this took order n. What about this entire if then else? This entire thing also is takes order n. Okay, so if you so this part is order one and this part is order n. So this part is order one. Right? On the other hand, the else part takes order n. So this entire block of code, if then else, block of code is order n. In the worst case. Right? Because if in the worst case the else gets the else part gets executed, then it's order n. So it's is it clear. So when you analyze the algorithm, we are going to always analyze the algorithm in the worst case, and therefore we are going to say so. Uh, so this is something we discussed earlier. We could have analyzed the algorithm in the best case scenario also, but that's not what we are interested in. We are interested in the worst case analysis of an algorithm. And in the worst case, how much time th does this block of code execute? In the worst case, the block of code uh, takes more time when it when the else part gets executed. And in the else part, it takes order in time. On the other hand, the if part takes order one time, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, Ah, now let's see another. So what about this block of code followed by another block of code? Again, I'm going to write another printf. IAT. So this block of code, this takes order n, and what about this? This is also order n because this program gets executed for n n uh, steps, and therefore this entire block of code gets executed for order n. Right. Okay. So I'm going to change a little bit. I'm going to write rather than n. I'm going to write n by two. So this is i equal to 0 to i less than n by 2. Then what can I say? What is n by 2? n by 2 is also order n. Right? So this is also order n. What if I had written 2n? i less than 2n. 2n is also because we know 2n is also order n. n by 2 is also order n. Okay. Okay, now <clears throat> just slight thing. Uh, is 2n equal to small o of n? Or wait, n by 2 equal to small o of n? Is this true? This is small o. Is this true? This is not true because limit of n tends towards infinity. This is not equal to 0, right? Okay. So n by 2 is not equal to 0 of n, uh, sorry, not equal to small o of n. Okay, so we uh, deviated a little bit, let's come back. Okay, so this is uh, order of n, this is order of n and then their block of code is also order of n. So, uh, so what, uh, what I am trying to say, okay. Uh, this, let me just say, so this is, let me say I am going to run it for i in, uh, i less than n square. How much does this block of code take? This is going to take n square, right? This is order of n square because now it is taking n square and this is order of n. And how much the entire block of code? This is going to take order n square plus order n. And what is that? This is order n square, right? Because we know n square plus n is order n square. Okay. So, the, so this is, takes order n square. Clear? So uh, now wh what is it we are uh, we have seen? We have seen if two for loops are executed in sequence that is one for loop, one block of for loop followed by the another block of for loop. <coughs> How much time does it take? It's basically order of the maximum of both these for loops. 
if this takes n square and this takes n it's so the entire block of code will take order n square right okay so this is going to be maximum right because as you can see this is uh, uh, it's addition of this running time of this plus running time of this so that is n square plus n so that is order n square good <coughs> let's go ahead let's move forward now uh, we have seen in sequence so what if, what if one uh, block one for loop is nested inside another for loop that's what we're going to see next So this is a block of, so this J block lies inside the I block, right? Ah, I forgot to tell you one thing. So this is, so this printf is a function call and I'm assuming that the function call takes order one time, right? Because this is a constant string which we are passing and it's going to take just a time to print it, right? So we are assuming that printf takes constant time. Now, <coughs> Um, okay, so we we are coming back here, and so so okay, so this takes order one time. What about this? This takes order n time, right? Because this J block runs for uh, n n steps, and this is something we saw. Just so this is a for loop which executes for n steps, and therefore this is order n time. Good. What is n? What about this entire block of code? So this is executed n times. And how many times does this n times get executed? This block of code, how many times get executed? So when i is equal to zero, it get executed once, right? So when, so let me just note down. So when i equal to zero, it gets executed n times, right? When i is equal to one, it gets executed. This inner for loop, the printf gets executed n times, right? And when i is equal to two, it gets executed n times. So up to n minus 1, when i is equal to n minus 1, it gets up executed n times. How many times? So n times. So this so how so in total, how many times did this printf get printed? How many times did this hello get printed? So this is n plus n plus n plus how many times? N times. So this is equal to n square. Or the center thing is. This takes order n square time. The sender block of code takes order n square time right? because it's n into n. Good. Okay. Next thing, I'm going to slightly change this, and this is uh, going to get a little tricky, but this is kind of a block of code you're going to see often, and that's why we are going to first let's analyze it first, and then uh, when we get to when we use this part, part, block of code for some application, we can quickly tell how much time, what is asymptotic running time, right? Okay, um, let's just change it again. Oh, let's come back to the board. And what is the change I made? I made, it has started earlier in the er previous code, it started from j is equal to zero and up to j less than n. Now it's not. What I have changed it, the, this part, this block of code runs only from i to n. 
okay not from 0 to n but from i to n that's some change i did uh, now how much time does this entire block of code take what is asymptotic running time this is going to be a little tricky right so let's try to do this and let's try to get the pattern and do a count so when i is equal to 0 how many times does this block of code get executed so when i is equal to 0 so we are i'm going to count how many times this hello gets printed and initially i is equal to 0 and therefore this gets printed n times right so hello gets printed n times fine because it's this goes from 0 to n 0 to n minus 1 right that is n n hellos get printed now next is when i is equal to 1 what happens when i is equal to 1 this is 1 to n that is this is n minus 1 right so hello gets printed n minus 1 when i is equal to 2 hello gets printed n minus 2 of 2 okay you, you, you see the pattern 3 n minus 3 and up to i can at most become the maximum value i can take is n minus 1 and therefore this is n minus n minus n minus 1 or n n gets cancelled this is equal to 1 okay so in total how many times did hello get printed so it is n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 up to 1 right so this is okay so let me just write so this is equal to n plus n minus 1 plus right okay. right so this is same as this is equal to so let me write it as let me write it here this is So this is summation of numbers from 1 to n. Summation of numbers from 1 to n. What is the answer to this? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. What is this? n into So if uh, n is equal to 2 this is 3 right so 2 plus 1 is 3 so n into n plus 1 by 2 is that correct um, it's, so this can be proved by induction but uh, we can just try out a few examples so when n is equal to 3 it's 3 plus 2, 5 plus 1, 6. So 3 means uh, 3 times 4. Uh, that's 12 by 2, 6. It's correct. For 2, this is uh, n is equal to 2. It's 2 plus 1, 3. 6 by 2, 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. It's correct. What about 5? 5 plus 4, 9. Plus 3, 12. Plus 2, 14. Plus 1, 15. Okay. 5, it's 15. So 5 plus 6, 5 into 6, 30 by 2, 15. So it's correct. Okay. So I'm going to assume this to be correct. If you don't know this formula, you need to do uh, prove this by induction. This is something, this is a formula you need to remember. Or if you don't remember, you need to know how to prove this fact. Right. <coughs> how many hellos did this function print? This block of code print. So this is n into n plus 1 by 2. and in order notation what is this so this is let me just make this simpler so this is half times n square plus half times n and what is this i claim this is this is order n square right because we know this half gets kind of absorbed and this is constant times n square and therefore this is also this is order n square and hence this block of code is order n square this is same as 
uh, if you had j equal to 0 that's also order n square and this block of code is also order n square uh, a very important lesson which you need to keep in mind because this kind of code comes up everywhere yeah so what i am saying is so uh, any any uh, any kind of code where the number of steps is n plus n minus 1 up to 1 uh, summation of uh, numbers like that it's going to take order n square this is the same as taking order n plus n plus n times that's also order n square n plus n minus 1 up to 1 is also order n square right uh, it, it, an important observation okay so this is also order n square uh, what about I, 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 I modify it to let me say j equal to 0 to n minus i what is this let's count again let's count again and so when i is equal to 0 how many times when i is equal to 0 how many steps did uh, does this uh, printf execute or how many times does hello get printed when i is equal to 0 again this is this takes 0 to n minus i or 0 to n minus 0 n or n steps right 0 to n minus 1 many um, hellos get executed next when uh, i uh, goes to i becomes 1 so at that time it it's again 0 to n minus 1 so this the number of times hello gets printed is n minus 1 and similarly you can see the pattern n minus 2 to n minus n minus 1 or 1 right and this is again this um, order n square and therefore this block of code is also order n square okay. so you see the pattern right so whenever uh, uh, you are getting a pattern like this n plus n minus 1 plus up to 1 uh, uh, times execution happens the entire block of code is going to take order n square right Okay, now what if I had uh, put one more for loop on top of it? So let's say for k is equal to 0 to k less than n. This is another for loop on top of this, which runs for n steps. Then this entire block of code is going to take order n cube. Right? So that's because it's going to, so this much, the number of time this gets executed is going to be multiplied n times or order n cube happens right okay so you, you, we understand the pattern now right so if uh, if something is inside a for loop that gets executed n times so that's how you, you we are going to see it let's look at one concrete example of a program and let's try to calculate its running time And the program, while I uh, rub off, the program uh, I have in mind, the problem I have in mind is, I'm, I'm giving you a list of integers, okay, an array of n, n integers is passed to a function and the function has to return the maximum number in that array, right, okay. So what I want is a function which takes an array, let's, let's say an array AR of integers from 0 to n minus 1 or n integers and your, the, your function, let, let me call it min, uh, what did I say max, okay, so max, so the type of max would be, it should return int 
and it should take this array. Okay, so it's it's going to take this array, and I'm going to take this array by. Right, this is the how in C you will take an array. This is the type of the function, and the function should take this n element array, and it we have to return its maximum number, the maximum in this array. Let me write the code for it. How do what do we do? We are going to keep one variable and that variable is going to find out the maximum value, right? So, I am going to first keep one um, max value into some variable. So I am going to have the variable int uh, so the int the maximum element I am going to store it in uh, this variable max element and initially I am going to assign it to the The first element in the array or uh, array index 0 is that value is copied into max element. Right. And next what I do is I am going to write the for loop. So the for loop is going to go through each of the array elements and it's going to store the maximum value into max element if uh, if indeed it's uh, that value is greater than um, the currently the current maximum value okay so So what, what did I do? I took a max Let's take a look. So what, what did I do? I'm, I took a So initially I set max element to the 0th index, the first element in the array and then what I'm going to so this is now at the beginning so I'm here till the zeroth element the max element contains the largest element till the array till here right a r of zero and next I'm going to go through the for loop from 1 to n minus 1 and each time I check whether a r of i is greater than the max element and if that is the case I will just copy max element is equal to a r of i right and that's it and then I keep on doing this. Once I finish the for loop, I'm done. It's clear. Uh, you want some example? I can just draw some example. Let me just put that. Mm, 10, 50, 30, 70, 20. Okay, 5. This is my array. And at the beginning, max element is set to. Uh, Is equal to 10 because it's it's here and then I'm going to go from here so i is equal to 1 I start from there and I check whether ar of i 50 is greater than 10 it is true so max element becomes I change it because now we come inside the for uh, if condition and this becomes equal to 50 I go here I move here next in the for loop iteration i is equal to 2 this condition is false nothing happens 
I come here, I is equal to 3, yeah, the condition is true, the max element changes to 70, right. Next is go to I is equal to 4, the if condition is false, so nothing happens inside and then it changes to I is equal to 5 and nothing happens again. Okay, and that's why the max element we get it as 70 and we just return. Good, so this algorithm seems to be working correctly and now question is how much time does it take? We know the answer, right? So all these statements, these are all going to take order 1, right? This is going to take order 1, this is going to take order 1. What about this? This gets executed n minus 1 steps, right? This inside this block of code is again order 1, but this for loop gets executed n minus 1 type uh, uh, steps, n minus 1, um, sorry, n minus 1 steps this for loop gets executed and therefore this entire thing is order n. And this is again order 1. So this, uh, this function in total gets executed. The running time of this function is order n. Okay, so max, to get the max, I, I take order n time. A slightly different question. What if I wanted the maximum and the second maximum? Okay, first two, max and second max. So here, so uh, the two numbers will be 70 and 50, right? I want both 70 and, so maximum and the second maximum. Right, so what should I do? I have to keep another variable, right? That will be my second maximum. So let me just do that. I'm going to just write, this is AR of 1, uh -huh. but if, should it be AR of 1? No, it depends on if um, whichever is bigger should be there. So let me just do that. Uh, let me write a piece of code there. I'm going to wrap this off. I will write there. Okay, this is a slight modification I did. I have two numbers now, max second and max element. So max element contains AR1 and max second get, contains AR0. I first assign that and then I check whether AR of 0 is greater than AR of 1. If AR of 0 is greater than AR of 1, max element should be AR of 0, right? And max element will be AR of 0 and max second will be AR of 1. So I have two variables now and I just keep track of both of them correctly. So the second most will be in max second and uh, first will be in max element. This is uh, what we will do and this becomes, now I have to go through only from 2. Okay, and now I have to do a few things. If AR of i is greater than max element, obviously this happens. But before this happens, I will have to do the following change also. Max second becomes equal to max element, right? Okay, and so there is an else case also. Okay, and else case from this if condition. And what is that else? That else is else if AR of i is greater than max of second. And in this case, what do we do? We just have max of second is equal to AR of i. Is it clear? So <clears throat> what we did now is we keep two variables and I track of the, I, I basically keep track of the maximum and the second maximum element. How much time did, does this take? It's the question we are addressing. And it's going to again take order n time, right? Because all these times, so this is, this is order one and this entire for loop gets executed n minus two times and therefore order n. 
and this if condition takes order once constant time this is const these are all some like maybe five steps or six steps something like that so order one so everything is order one yeah. and therefore this entire function also takes order and time because of this for loop right okay so uh, here's the thing i have basically found out uh, i have to use two elements right two numbers to do this and uh, so sorry i have to use two variables to basically capture the second most and the uh, and the first and the maximum so let's say uh, our interest was to return the second most so what if i wanted the third most just think about it i will have to create i will have to use three variables and use and basically do this thing for the three variables what if I wanted to, now here's a question you can think. What if I wanted to find out the n by 2, 3 uh, number, largest number? Okay, so this was uh, the f uh, largest number, the second largest number, the, th the third largest number, we know, we keep one more variable and do it. What if I wanted to find out the n by 2 largest? Very interesting question. How much, uh, you just... You, you do it as an exercise that's kind of the middle element in the array right and this is uh, called as the median problem finding given an array finding the median that's the middle element in an array so find, so this is the median problem of given an array finding the middle element in the array and you can try this thing and if you you should if you get an order of n square algorithm it's great, good. Try if we can get an order of n square algorithm to find this median. Okay, so that'll be good, a good attempt. If you get an order of n algorithm, you are, I mean, you, you are great. This is very difficult to get an there is an order of n algorithm and that's very difficult and if you can do that by yourself you get a cs degree you need to take the rest of the courses <laughs>